All right, Coach, getting ready for the conference tournament in Fort Worth. Uh, what's kind of the feeling like? I know you had a big win on Sunday. You've come back to practice. You know, a lot of the guys who were hurt are now back on the bench and ready to play. Uh, you know, I think we talked to Michael Durr. He feels you guys might be the most dangerous team in this tournament, knowing what you've got. How is the team feeling right now? Uh, the team's feeling good. You know, we're excited. You know, for the opportunity. Uh, guys have been practicing hard. A lot of good energy, and that's what you want to have. You know, everybody starting back at zero and zero. It's a new season for us. That's been our approach, and our guys have taken that to heart. Going into the tournament this year, it feels like you guys have a similar feel to last year as far as we were pretty close to seeding where we were last year. What's different about this team to make noise in the tournament? Well, I think this team, you know, they're still emerging to become the team we want to become. We know we haven't played the way we're capable of, you know, throughout this season, but, you know, the time is now. I mean, there's no more do-overs. You know, everybody's back at zero and zero. We know this team is capable of doing some special things, and uh, we believe in them, they believe in themselves, and we're going to keep pushing. Taylor said he didn't think, you know, coming into UCF, he wouldn't be potentially AAC freshman of the year. He's won the weekly award nine times. What do you kind of remember about when you first saw Taylor play and the recruiting and potentially you saw on him? Well, he was a good player, you know, a really good player. Uh, we knew he needed to develop some, you know, and become more of a perimeter player because at this level and for what we needed him to do, we need him to be more, you know, face up, you know, as opposed to back to the basket. And so he's really embraced that. He's really worked hard on his skills. He gets better every game. And uh, I think you see that. So for me, it's just I've enjoyed watching him improve, watching him, you know, get better. And I've enjoyed watching his teammates kind of, you know, get to know him and, and share the experience that, with him as well. How important was it for Ithiel Horton to kind of get on a roll a little bit in the last game? When his shot's going down, you guys are tough to beat. Absolutely. When he's making shots, you know, of course, it just raises our game to another level because he's such a threat out there. He's, he's a dynamic scorer. He's a quick release. Uh, he definitely helps us in that regard. But he's been really good for us on both ends of the floor. He defends hard. Uh, he's been a great teammate, you know, brings energy to every practice. So definitely enjoy coaching him as well. How is SMU different today than they were with the first time you played? Well, they were they were shorthanded the first time. They were similar to us. They were shorthanded. You know, they had been going through some things. Uh, their their best guard, leading scorer Phelps, did not play against us. So it's going to be a different team that we'll face on Thursday because of his presence. So uh, definitely, it's going to be a difference, but it's something we have to prepare for. Coach, we've had plenty of conversations about adversity through the year with injuries and all that. What's been the key for guys who have come back to have done so and then contribute as soon as possible? Well, it's always tough when you're out that long. It's, it's some of our guys that extended an extended time off, and so when they come back, it's always of them getting back in rhythm, our team getting back in rhythm with them. It's always a tough process when you're inserting a new player that hadn't been around for three weeks, four weeks, five weeks, and so you're adjusting. You know, everybody's been used to playing without him, and now he's in the, in the rotation. So that's what what happens in that situation. But I think our guys have done a good job. We kept, you know, fighting and, and guys are allowed to get themselves back in rhythm like they have. With all that being said, you feel like you guys are the healthiest you've been this year, you know, since first injuries come came up or uh, definitely healthiest, you know, without CJ right. <laughs> Walker. The healthiest except for CJ, yes, everybody else is is uh, in good position and in good shape and ready to go. Has this been a challenging season for you as a staff from all the moving parts with the injuries and making adjustments on the fly? Is this the most challenging? Uh, it's been fairly challenging. You know, I've, I've, you know, for me, fortunately, I've had this challenge before so you know I'm kind of accustomed to it and that helps but it's, it's nothing you can do when you guys go down like that it's nothing you can do other than next man up mentality everybody keep playing you know make no excuses and keep going out there and fighting that's all you can do and that's what we've done here as a team that we've done as a program and that's what we'll continue to do you said this team hasn't hit its stride yet do, do you see it coming and can you throw that mantra into the tournament you know why not us I mean, let's break it out now absolutely you know we feel like it's, it's going to be someone you know, and that's going to win this conference tournament. So we feel like, why not us? It's absolutely right. You know, we we going in this tournament. You know, we're fairly healthy. Our guys have you know coming off you know a, you know a few good games. You know, I think recently that we've played. So I think we got some uh, some confidence because of that. So we're going in at with I think with the right mindset that we can compete with anyone. And and like I said, it's going to be someone. So why not us, right? Jim Nance in a recent interview mentioned you. This is his final. Final Four as play-by-play -play voice. He mentioned his first NCAA tournament play-by-play -play wow. was in Greensboro in 86 with that. your Duke team. And then he said that his first CBS assignment as a studio was that Final Four is the year you were in the Final Four. You've had interactions with him, I'm sure, over the years. What's your thoughts on Jim Nance and what he's meant to college basketball? Uh, he's been great for our game. I mean, what a great voice. Uh, his knowledge of the game, I mean, is, is shoot, unparalleled. I mean, he's been he's been amazing, 
and uh, I'll miss him. You know, after he said this is his last, you know, go around, I'll definitely miss him. And I think the game will miss him because I thought he provided a lot, you know, with his commentary. Good luck, Coach. Thanks, guys.